but put in the net by Shane Welch. He got a goal and two. Off he goes on the Waterford fans, absolutely delighted by what they've seen in the first half. The attitude has been good, the application very, very positive. Waterford have a lot more to do, but then Galway have come in as the favourites. Irla Tanya in one point from the efforts of the first half, but only two between them at the break. It's Waterford 1-9, it's Galway 1-7. We've analysis and a lot more to talk about after this. So Waterford ahead by two points, ready to start the second half. Waterford to reach the All-Ireland semi-final, either as Munster champions or quarter-final winners in each of the last five years. No changes on either team then, and so it is Waterford who try to get the second half underway in a positive fashion. Michael Brick Walsh foul there, and that'll be a free in which Porik Mahoney will fancy taking on a very still day here in Semple Stadium. Little or no breeze around, just wrestled around there was Brick Walsh. Yeah, which I would see so much of that with Brick Walsh. He's so strong, you know, with, with a ball like that with two or three players around, he gets in there, and I see Damien Hill's gone to centre forward now, and you know, maybe wait till after Potty Man he takes the three, but just to want to make a comment about the goal of the forward line. Well, three so far, Michael, for uh, Porik Mahoney from Freeze, and now he's started the second half in much the same manner. Yeah, Joe has another super free, but just the balance of the goal forward line to me is just not right. Joe Gantley to me prefers full forward. Ear Latanian probably prefers full forward. Ger Farher is really a midfielder over the last few years. Um, you know, James Regan, one of mine, I learned at midfield. So to me, they don't look to have natural wing and corner forwards out there on the field. Clinton Dennis's puck out is targeted anyway towards Ear uh, Latanian. Runs on eventually to corner back for Waterford Fergal, uh, Derv Fives rather. Big huge clearance down, Malumphy was after it there. Slipping and sliding and struggling was Fergal Moore. But the assistance comes in through David Collins. Oof, bit high for Donald Barry to contain, did well, trying to hand pass, robbed of it there by Porik Mahoney. And Mahoney goes down and there's another free in, pumping the air with joy, young Porik Mahoney. And uh, a nervous start to the second half by Galway. Yeah, but Jared, David Collins came out with that ball. Nobody near him. All he threw was drive it 70, 80 yards up the field and he chose to hand pass it. And we saw it in the last game with you know, Limerick as well taking two and three hand passes. It's fine to use a hand pass to get out of trouble. But once you get out of trouble and you're clear, the ball should be delivered as fast as possible. And that's what Tipperary and Kilkenny have built their game on over the last number of years. Well, Galway, as you suggest, have not been doing the simple things well so far in this match. So more target practice for Porik Mahoney, this time from 45 metres out from the uh, town end goal and same usual result five points now from freeze for Porik Mahoney two of them at the start of the second half and we're only two minutes into that and the Waterford fans probably scratching their heads wondering hello is this the same team more or less that flopped completely just two weeks ago Kevin Moran had a good game then even on a beaten docket in as far as Shane Welch does well terrible angle but what a good score. Goal and three now for Shane Walsh, and he really is tormenting the Galway backline, and his marker, Shane Cavan in particular. As Liam Sheedy was saying, he had difficulty with him down in Welsh Park in April, and he's having difficulty here in Semple Stadium. Yeah, and Shane Walsh, was a, he, he gave every full-back in the country trouble during the league. He's now standing league, has been a great championship up for today, but absolutely flying it today. Somebody should tell Galway the second half has started. Kevin Moran knocking this one in. And that is uh, a wasted opportunity, but hang on, the referee's going in because there was a blow there delivered to Owen Kelly. And he looks in trouble. And the man who was nearest to him, I think, was David Collins. Just watch him again. Collins, yeah, connected there with Owen Kelly as they were looking at that ball, which was heading off over the end line. And the referee now going to have some words with his two umpires. But I think the referee got a right good view of it anyway, just probably wants to confirm it in his mind. And he's going to call David Collins across here now. And that'll be a free in. Yeah, and a free a in and a yellow card. Yeah, he, he made no attempt to play the ball. He, was, he couldn't see where the ball was and he just pulled the hurt to, to shepherd it out wide and uh, it's definitely a yellow card. Cyril Donnell will be coming in very shortly. There's a yellow card for David Collins. Joe Gantley is the one we believe will be going off. So, as anticipated, Cyril Donnellan in very shortly. Running repairs carried out to Owen Kelly. Well, this is a guy playing his 43rd championship match today. He's an amazingly long record of scoring 
13 goals, 185 points, only a point short of 125 in all. Hasn't scored so far today, but the man who's going to take the free here certainly has. And it's Porik Mahoney, the young Bally Gunner, in the sunshine of Semple Stadium, calm as you like, tapping it over. And there is a big job on for Galway if they're to come back here quickly because they're 113 to 17 down. They've made the change. Cyril Donlan's in. Joe Gantley's out. Yeah, Jaron, the same question that's been asked over the last few years. Where is the leadership for Galway going to come from? The body language of the players doesn't look to me you know, what it should be for a knockout championship game. A lot of lads strolling around the place out there. And at this stage, it's very hard to see a way back for Galway unless they change their attitude. James Skehill now. Galway will need to be in a hurry. They've got a half an hour left to save their season. Running back here and taking it, David O'Sullivan, whose uh, brother, Brian, was unable to start because of injury. That's fumbled there by Seamus Prendergast. Everybody's fumbling it. In came Adrian Cullinan. Going to ground rather easily, hand-passing it to nobody in particular, but it might work out yet. James Regan couldn't hold on to it. Back goes Michael Brick-Walsh. Adventurously paying it back towards his goalkeeper, Clinton Hennessy. Oh, that's poorly cleared. Missed by Ger Farraher because of the combination of blocks and hooks and swept away by Seamus Prendergast. A lot of errors. All the way down towards Shane Welsh it goes. 45 metres out from the Galway goal. Shane Welsh playing it outside here. As far as Porik Mahoney. Can he score from play? This time angling it across diagonally. Taken down neatly here and put over the bar by Owen Kelly. First of the day for Owen Kelly, and in goals and points, that's now 125 points he's scored. More importantly, he's put Waterford into a seven-point lead in the All-Ireland quarter-final. Yeah, Joe, great score there. Parik, Owen Kelly made a great run from the right half-forward position, and Parik Manny looked up and spotted him across it. And that's the first point Owen Kelly has scored in quite a few matches, and he gave him a great lift. That's a high challenge by Andy Smith there on Tony Brown. Waterford have got a huge lift at the start of this second half. Five scoring chances, five points taken by the Dacia. They've got a free coming up. And we're going to have Kevin Hines coming in very shortly for Donald Barry, I believe, also for Galway. Tony Brown in no particular hurry. 20th playing season of the championship. What an amazing record, what an amazing man he's been. And that one just tailed away to the right. But some record, Tony Brown. Well, he hasn't totally committed, Jerry. You know, there's more to her a championship hurling than having skill and having all the touches. You need heart and determination, and you need the will to win. And Tony Brown has it, Brick Walsh has it, Kevin Moore has it. But, you know, there's not that many golf players out there to me today that look like they w that they're built ready for a battle and ready to die in the field for their county. And that's what you need to do if you want to be successful. Well, you've seen the switch there. Kevin Hines on, Donald Barry off. Again, across comes Tony Brown here. This is his eighth quarter-final match in the All-Ireland series. Quite a record. Comes in here as far as Shane O'Sullivan. On for Milan. Breaks free. Two players from Galway are after him. Look at the pace of the man. Across here towards Shane Welch. Causing difficulties for David Collins. Taking it under control. Trying to scamper free. Looking for latitude. Not easy here. He's put it wide. But he's a busy player, he's constantly involved. The puck out's taken quickly. All the way down it's come as far as substitute Cyril Donnellan. Can he make a difference? Got three points or three goals in the opening championship match for Galway. That was against Westmead. This is against Waterford. And this is Damien Hayes firing it off his left. They need a score. And Damien Hayes has put it right. Still 114 to 17. Galway haven't scored. Started the second half, which is eight and a half minutes old. They've made two changes in playing personnel, and John McIntyre and his squad are in a difficult situation. They can still get the measure of Waterford, but right now they're under pressure from Seamus Prendergast, and he has wasted that chance, blazed it away. Yeah. Should have been able to score from there. Yeah, and you know, Waterford had a couple of wides there again. They've had nine in the first half, another couple, and you know they're leaving Galway in it. If Galway can just, you know, regain their composure, maybe get a score or two, uh, there's still loads of time left. Well, they have a total of 12 wides so far, and right now it's Galway who draw the foul there. It is Cyril Donnellan ready to run at that Waterford defence. Shane Sullivan back, foul committed. 
and it's going to be a free in and a chance now for the opening score of the second half for the tribesmen here. Well, it was uh, Michael Brick Walsh who did the fouling there. Shane O'Sullivan was late on the scene after that. Joe Canning to take this. He's got a goal and two in this match from just inside the 45 meter line. Simple chance for Joe. He's got a goal and three. Galway off the mark, start of the second half. Well, it's taken them some nearly 10 minutes to get their first score. But at least there are now just six between them. Yeah, and Water, Waterford very miserly. They only conceded four frees in the entire first half. Um, I think only one in, in the Waterford half of the field and just another one there now. Seamus Prendergast out as far as Kevin Moran had a great first half. He's having a very good second half. Three points for Kevin Moran. Brilliant play by the De La Salle man. Well, he's given leadership time and again. Galway may be looking for their leaders, but this is certainly one of the leaders of Desha Hurling. Only 24 years of age, and it's 115 to 18. There's an injury here to Adrian Cullinan. And if they had to replace him, he would be the third sub they would have been forced to introduce. Team doctor there alongside him, Dan Murphy. And it looks like Cullinan's gone, and they're going to have to make another change. And the man who's going to be coming on in just a moment will be John Lee. Meanwhile, it's Waterford to challenge, and it's John Mullan holding on to it. Possession so important. Shane O'Sullivan diagonally across into space. That's going to favour the Galway backs. And there's a man without a helmet no behind there. You can't do that. And that man, of course, is Adrian Cullinan, who is. Uh, just after receiving some attention, was about to leave the field and be replaced by John Lee. And I think that change will be made now. And the referee is going to uh, throw the ball in. It's a, a technical offence, essentially, not to play with a helmet on. So John Lee, who's a doctor, comes in. Colin Ann goes off. Three subs used. It's getting critical now for Galway. Back once again come Waterford. And another missed chance by Seamus Prendergast, two in a row by the man from Ardmore. Um, it's a real substitution, so John Lee on now for the remaining minutes of the game, it would appear. <coughs> Puck out by James Skehill. Waterford defending valiantly, none more so than Tony Brown. Michael Welch back in there. Everybody reaching up for it. Owen Kelly trying to take it. Comes away in the end, however. By Shane Cavanagh gets it out here. Taken by.